Having a good cup of coffee every day makes a whole difference in how your day goes. If you're seen taking a cup of coffee, you know, it, it's a cool thing. For Ugandans who haven't yet discovered coffee, you don't know what you're missing. is as important to Ugandans as the very blood that runs through their veins. It was used for many cultural practices, including marriage ceremonies. You know when you seal a deal in ink and take a brother for one or two? Well, not our forefathers. They sealed their brotherhood in blood. There used to be a culture where you would get a coffee bean and the two people who want to have friendship, each one gets a coffee bean, and you cut your body, blood oozes out, you dip the bean into that blood, you give it to your friend, and they chew it, and vice versa. A practice locally known as omukago. The Batoro, who live in a rich mountainous west of the country, use the bin as a way of welcoming visitors into their home. There is a small basket of coffee bins by the door, and the visitors are invited to chew one upon entering the home. Coffee was considered a special wind trapper, for the winds believed to be carrying spirits and gods. It is believed, even today, that a coffee tree cannot be struck by lightning. However, this culture is being phased out with popular modernization. The only culture still standing is coffee chewing. The beans were prepared and kept in a nice banana fiber wrap. That way they were preserved much longer. It's still common nowadays to see hawkers and vendors selling this kind of coffee. People like it. It's like a reminder from their past. Coffee was basically a, a crop for the husband only. A lot of women, when we went for farmer training in some of the rural villages, thought that the coffee, dried cherry, is used for gunpowder. That's um, how little they knew about coffee. It was also used to boost uh, men sexually. Everyone grew coffee in the early 50s. Well, coffee and cotton which made the two compete for the position of the highest income earner, hence Uganda's two leading cash crops. Fast forward to 1989. Uganda's coffee exceeds its quarter of 2.3 million bags. However, export volumes still diminished by economic and security problems. A lot of the would-be exported coffee are also rejected on the world market because of poor drying and preparation practices. Like most agricultural produce, the marketing of coffee in the 1960s to the late 1970s was state controlled. Cooperative unions were the only buyers and hallers for the coffee marketing board, which enjoyed the monopoly as sole buyer and exporter of Ugandan coffee. Led by His Excellency, President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, the government of Uganda, through the Coffee Act, liberalized and privatized the sector, a policy that enabled farmers to control and have a say in the commercialization and management of the business, rather than the government. We were sensitized to, the, to make cooperatives, so we collect all our coffee from members, by the way, who are committed to quality improvement, then we haul it and take it to the exporter ourselves. And this has earned us some good premium. Smallholder farmers integrate their coffee plants with other traditional crops, including bananas, beans, and shed trees, 
ensuring environment sustainability and food security. I've decided to intercrop putting this hot pepper and passion fruits to maximally utilize the land. As I'm waiting for the coffee, then I can be able to get money from the sale of passion fruits and hot pepper. Uganda grows two types of coffee, Arabica in the mountainous regions, parts of Mount Elgon in the east, West Nile, and along the Renzori Mountains in Kasese. Robusta prefers loams and clays which hold water for a whole lot longer, making it thrive best around the Great Lake Victoria Basin. Unlike Arabica coffee, which was introduced from Malawi in the 1900s, Robusta species are indigenous to Uganda. Robusta still grows wild in some parts of Uganda, especially Chivale, which has been gazetted recently by government as a way of conserving the original genes of Robusta. Coffee was growing on its own almost, and um, they were only out to pick. Even it could grow on the bush, and you go and pick from the bush. Some parts of the world, the coffee, the taste, even ourselves, we will find it very different because it is dominated by the original, the indigenous coffee uh, species. The international coffee market has always regarded Uganda as the source of some of the best Robusta coffees. Coffee in Uganda is harvested all year round with two major peaks from November to February and from June to September. In simple terms, Uganda supplies fresh coffee all through the year. Uganda exports an average of 4 million bags of coffee annually, which makes it the biggest exporter in Africa. The external marketing is handled by dozens of exporters. The majority have facilities for export reprocessing. One such company is Yugakov. Today we are exporting 17% of Ugandan coffee. We stress mainly on quality and value addition and transparency. And because of that, we are number one exporter in Uganda. Everything else we do here is to fulfill the, the requirement of international trade. Uganda is a country of tea drinkers that grow a lot of coffee for sale. Unlike Ethiopia, who produces more coffee, but consumes almost half of it domestically. Coffee being a strategic crop in Uganda, government enacted the Coffee Law Coffee Act in 1991, which established specialized agencies for promoting and developing coffee, like Uganda Coffee Development Authority. UCDA is uh, a government agency that uh, was set up by a coffee act to develop and promote coffee industry and also to uh, regulate it. We are mandated to oversee all the activities of the coffee. We give them information, we give them support, technical support. We facilitate all the activities. There are standards which are there which they must meet. So we are just overseeing the whole sector to make sure that it does not go offline. UCDA conducts trainings for farmers, graders, cuppers, baristas, exporters, and many others at all levels of the coffee industry. UCDA now holds international barista competitions, a program that not only has great attendance, but also provides and showcases some of the best baristas the world has to offer. We started the Uganda Barista Championship in 2008. Every year, a Ugandan representative going to the world stage to talk about Ugandan coffee. One of them actually is here, who was the champion in 2008. I emerged as the best barista, and then I represented the country in the World Barista Championship, which took place in Copenhagen uh, city in Denmark. 
UCDA working with Coffee Quality Institute, CQI, with support from USAID LEAD, initiated the development of Fine Robusta Coffee Concept. This made Uganda the birthplace of Fine Robusta Protocols. Really, I'm excited to say that Uganda now is accepted internationally as the center of excellence for Robusta. This is internationally recognized. Robusta is native to Uganda, and thus it should be good. We are running training programs for certifying our inspectors. The programs are two. One is Q grading and the other grading. The Q grading is for Arabica, and the other grading is for Robusta. All right, I'm now going to pass out the uh, certificates for assistant R instructors. And there's actually 42 R graders in, in Uganda, and no other country has even more than five. So it's a big thing. A symposium was held in Uganda, attracting cappers from Brazil, India, Tanzania, Congo, Cameroon, Mexico, USA, and the United Kingdom, who capped robusta coffee samples from different origins around the world, and later developed the fine robusta protocol used to differentiate the high quality robusta of fine robusta. Meet Sunalini the first Asian woman professional in the field of coffee tasting, as some may call it, coffee cupping. She is one of the world's best cup tasters. And now, testing Ugandan coffees. Very clean, we've got a nice sweet acidity, a very sweet finish, very rounded creamy mouthfeel, and a very nice distinct flavor of this little spice, the little nuts, the little milk chocolate coming through beautifully in the cup. So if you ask me about the Ugandan cuppers, they are very good, they're very knowledgeable, they have been trained well. They only need that exposure to people from other parts of the world, to cuppers from other parts of the world, so that they can see coffee through the eyes, nose and palates of others. There has been an emerging culture taking the city by storm of consuming coffee as a hot beverage. The coffee industry had been suffering from the fact that people think coffee is bad for your health. If 1.5 billion cups of coffee are drunk every day, those people are not dying. Why do we think we Ugandans, why would Ugandans die? We thought the approach was to teach. We started teaching, first of all, people in our boardroom, so there was that attitude change, which I think we have successfully uh, done, not in terms of numbers, but in terms of knowledge. Coffee, in the last couple of years, if you count how many coffee shops have been opening, the numerous, so that tells, tells you that it's a growing, it's a very strong sector. And many of us exporters are joining the, the wagon to rally people to drink coffee. The baristas are being trained and the promotions are on and people, they are finding it kind of trendy to be in a coffee shop and meet friends and have a cup of coffee and then rushing to a bar. If you're seen taking a cup of coffee, you know, it, it's a cool thing. When you take coffee, like you're sober and it, it relaxes you. I am sure I actually do things straight with coffee than any other drink. The only time I get to gather together with my friends is when we're taking coffee. Most especially when I'm tired and I take some coffee, I feel like my energy is back. I feel very nice, to be precise. Uganda is one of the leading producers of coffee in the Commonwealth, Africa and in the world. Coffee supports about 8 million people in Uganda and is the leading agriculture foreign exchange earner. The future of coffee in Uganda is higher than projections can display, not just for farmers and production units or outlets, but for the consumer of coffee. The government of Uganda is not just seated watching, no sir. They are supporting coffee research and extension, mass multiplication and distribution by planting 100 million seedlings per year to replace old trees, implementing irrigation schemes and placing systems that will facilitate bulk importation of fertilizers. 
government is also supporting the development of coffee farmer organizations and supporting them to participate effectively in all stages of the coffee value chain. Development partners have also been called in to support the private sector in implementation of some of these activities. Uganda has targets and strategies bound to lift coffee as the number one export cash crop and consumed product in the country. But better still, become the world's leading producer and exporter of the finest coffees for years to come.